Uh, uh, hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, Professor Teching here today to, uh, of course, grade your answers from yesterday's question that I posed. Uh, the question, of course, being how much thrust would Sabo have to exert with his Marimaranomi to, number one, break the sound barrier, and number two, break out of Earth's orbit. Um... Which, the answer, of course, I knew it the whole time. Alright, so, the first question I asked with, the like, the Tootsie Pop, you know, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? That was just, like, a joke question. This one, like, wow, there's some serious physics majors in my audience, which is great. I mean, if I ever decided to go back to college for a physics degree, which... That's a very likely series of events that would happen, right, Barry? Like, oh, well, the YouTube game ain't working out anymore. I guess I'll go be a physicist. That's number two on my list. But at least I know people that could possibly tutor me in this in this particular uh, career path. But, um, yeah, no, I, I do not understand half of the answers that were, like, serious answers. So here are some of my favorites, all people that... And I, I love how you guys went out and been like, okay, well, you didn't give us all the information we needed on that. Or some of our, like... You really don't know what thrust means, right, Teching? What you're actually asking for is this. And I'm like, yeah, I totally understood exactly what I was asking from you. But I appreciate all the answers. I really do. There were some people that really went uh, the whole nine yards for that. You you get an A++. In fact, you get an S+. S+, rank. That's a whole new score. I'm just giving to you S+. All right. And, uh, one, one final mention for that, there was one question, I mean, there was one answer to the question that I also liked, because it was probably the kind of answer that Oda would give. Like, if this question ever made it into the SBS, like, for Oda to answer, like, hey, Oda-sensei, how much thrust would Sabo have to exert to break the sound barrier? Oda's answer would probably be, a hundred Marimaras to break the sound barrier, and a thousand Marimaras to break out of the Earth's orbit, because that's what Oda always answers. Because I think, at the beginning of the story, there were people that were asking, Asking him about like Luffy's Gamu Gamu no Mi, like how many, uh, you know, how far can Luffy stretch? You know, fair question. How far can Luffy stretch with his Gamu Gamu no Mi? And Oda's like, oh, he could stretch about maybe uh, 800 Gamu Gamus, maybe a thousand Gamu Gamus if he got serious. How many hands can uh, you know Robin make, or what's the range of her Hana Hana no Mi? Oh, you know, it's about about 500 Hana Hanas, I'd say, give or take a few. But yeah, at any rate, thanks to everybody that answered the questions. It really means a lot. There's no new questions today. I'm gonna take a break from that for a while. But instead, today, we will be talking about the single most popular crew, the main characters of the story, if we're being honest. I mean, come on. If you think One Piece, what do you immediately think of? That's right. The Straw Hat Pirates. Like, no, 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 not these people. I mean, come on. Let's be serious here, guys. Look at this wall scroll really quick. I, I, I'm on to you guys. You're all just imposters. Do these people look like pirates to you? I mean, seriously. One of them is a damn Tanuki reindeer dog. You know, Sanji's wearing a suit. Do pirates wear suits? I don't think there's a single historical account of a pirate wearing, like, a three-piece suit. You know, Nami's running around in a bikini top. That's not very safe aboard the high seas. What if she gets a splinter or something? You know, that's just, it's just not practical, okay? I don't know what the hell's going on with Frankie in the background. Cyborgs are not pirates. They are cyborgs, okay? No. These are not the real Straw Hat Pirates. These! This merry band are, is the real Straw Hat Pirates in all of their glory. Uh, okay, so, yeah, the fake Straw Hat Pirates, uh, they appear during the Return to Saba Odi arc right after the time skip. They are, in essence, the first um, uh, villains that the Straw Hats have to face in their attempt to finally make it to the new world, you know, like getting to Fishman Island has been a long time coming. They keep getting sidetracked, you know, Florian Triangle, then Sabaody, and then Luffy punches a world noble, and then they all get separated by a bear guy, and then you know, Luffy goes to Amazon Lily, then they have to go to Impel Down, then they have to go to Marineford, then they have to wait two years. I mean, can we finally get to the new world already? Can we finally get to Fishman Island? And these guys right here are the last obstacle in the Straw Hats way. And they were a formidable bunch, let me tell you. Alright, so, you know, there's not really much to talk about when it comes to the fake Straw Hat crew in, like, their place in the story. And as I say that, you know, there's not much to talk about. You just look down and see how long this video is. Okay, you'll, we'll get to that in a second. Hold on. Because they really were just, like, a group of just random people, you know, pretending to be the Straw Hats, just trying to, you know, capitalize on their fame. And I, I, honestly, I don't know what their end game was. We'll get to that in a second. Their captain was a man by the name of Damaro Black. Uh, Three-tongued Damaro Black was his epithet. And he had a bounty of 26 million, which was even lower than, like, Luffy's original bounty, right? 
And so his thing is, of course, being three-tongued. He's really good at lying. He's really good at deception, deceit. Uh, you know, he's kind of like a con artist, so to speak. And then he got this group of people together. I don't think anybody else in the in the fake Straw Hat crew had a bounty except for Damaro Black. Uh, they all got little things in the Viva cards, and his was the only one that had a bounty. So all the other ones were just random people he brought together. And uh, at, Sabody, uh, at the Sabody Archipelago, his plan was to recruit, like, actually really strong pirates together, and Caribou and his brother were part of that group. Uh, Lip Service Dotri, I remember there was also one of the guys there. But he was gathering a bunch of people together, and uh, he was basically going to use his, um, you know, his deception to pass off as the real Straw Hat Luffy, and basically have a massive, like, kind of like a Straw Hat Grand Fleet before the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, and then do stuff. I don't really know what the overall plan was here, right? So, you know, eventually we all know what happens. You know, the real Straw Hats meet back up at Sabote Archipelago. There's a few huge humorous interactions where, like, Luffy runs into fake Zoro and fake Sanji, but thinks that they're the real people. Uh, Chopper, like, the actual Chopper thinks that, like, you know, the fake Robin is the real Robin, and that all the Straw Hats have, like, changed their ways. Like, oh my god, they've all changed after two years! It looks like I'm the only one that's really gonna be, you know, dedicated to the cause, you know? Uh, so there's a few humorous interactions there, but the Return to Sab Odi arc is not a particularly long arc. It's very, very short, because I think at this point, Oda knows, like, okay, Okay, yeah. Everybody, you know, we all know about Sabote Archipelago. Everybody wants us to get to Fishman Islands. Just, just move on, right? So there's a moment, of course, where Luffy's identity is revealed amidst all of the pirates and the fake Straw Hats realize he's the real deal. And he's like, it's the real Straw Hat Luffy! And they freak out. Sentomaru is there. Sentomaru brought some of the pacifistas with him. They identify the real Luffy. They attack him. And at the same time, Sentomaru realizes who this fake Luffy really is. One of the pacifistas scans him. You know, this is Damaro Black from the East Blue. He's only got a 26 million bounty. He's basically nothing. He's no one. And Sentomaru uses his axe to not, not like cleave him in twain, but like uses the blunt head of the axe to just knock his ass out. And then he's like, Ugh. and then I guess gets taken away and thrown in uh, prison, maybe impaled down. If he has a bounty of 26 million, he would probably be placed in, in, in probably level two of impel down if he got sent there. Because Buggy had a bounty of 15 million. We don't know exactly the border, but I think it's 20. I think it's like 20 million or less you go in level one. And Mr. Three Galdino, he had a bounty of like 24 million. So I think he, tomorrow Black, say whatever you want about tomorrow Black. He had a higher bounty than Mr. Three and, and Arlong, if we're being straight up. My God, that, wow, that doesn't sound right. You know, this guy, this guy had a higher bounty than Arlong. Meaning that if Damaro Black... Damaro Black is from the East. All the fake Straw Hats are from the East. It was given in their freaking Vivra cards. So I guess I guess he must have accrued his bounty at some point after uh, Luffy defeated Arlong, which ironically would make Damaro Black one of the highest, if not right now, the highest ranking... Uh, well, not right now because he got captured, but, you know, after Luffy left and Arlong was defeated, he might have had the highest bounty in the East Blue. Oh my god, right? <laughs> like, this guy. Now, of course, bounty doesn't automatically refer to power or, you know, your battle strength, because Damaro Black had really... None of the Straw Hats really had any sort of uh, combat capabilities outside of just using, like, pistols, and I think the fake Solge King used, like, a bazooka at one point. Outside of just using, like, firearms, they had no combat capabilities to speak of. I'm imagining Damaro Black probably got his bounty because of his uh, deceit and his uh, ability to, like, you know, con people. Kind of Maybe kind of similar to uh, my character I'm playing in Rustiches One Piece D at Rustiches Rustiches One Piece D and D right now. My character William, who's the captain of the Devil's Luck Pirates, uh, you know, he's he's a rogue, he's a swashbuckler rogue, so he's you know prizes himself in like deceit and con artistry. And maybe that's the same deal with tomorrow black. Uh, I'm wondering how many I wonder if he's also taken out as many old people as William has, though. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, maybe tomorrow black, maybe at some point, uh, you know, he you know conned a noble or something. Like maybe he maybe he started like the one piece equivalent of like the spam emails or the chain letters you know you ever log into your like you ever check your spam email just to see and just be like oh hey um you know i recently acquired 10 million dollars just give me your bank account information and i'll send it right along <laughs> you know maybe tomorrow black was like the kind of like precursor to that in the one piece world right like he shows up at a at, at somebody's house on an island and he's just like hey there citizen uh i'm from the uh the world government prize 
Sunday's authority. You've won the, the, the government sweepstakes. You know, all you gotta do is just, like, give us all your money straight up as collateral, and then we'll give you, you know, 10 billion berries or whatever. Like, oh my god, really? I won Honey, come here. We won the government sweepstakes. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, yeah, that's totally a thing, right? He shows up to people's houses. He looks just the same as he does in Saboti. He just has, like, a fake tie. He just, like, wraps up just tie. Like, there you go. <laughs> And maybe he swindled, like, the entire island, right? Like, like an entire island, even the nobles or the marines or somebody, and he got away with all the money, and maybe that was the money he used as the startup to start the fake Straw Hat crew, because there had to be a little bit of seed money to make that work, right? And maybe that's how he got his bounty of 26 million, right? Because it's definitely not for his combat capabilities, right? But, yeah, 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 okay. So, uh, let's, let's do a roll call here. Let's do the roll call of the fake Straw Hat Pirates. You know, and of course, they're- Oh my god, they didn't even get the damn logo right! I mean, come on, guys! How hard is it to get the damn logo? I mean, I don't even think- I think, you know what? It's been a while, this, this is just, uh, this is just bear facts. These are just the polar bear facts I did from the Beppo video. But, I think I could probably draw a, a, a the Straw Hat logo better than this one you know just from memory all right so you got to start with the lower jaw i've actually had to do this before i had to do this when i did the uh my old backdrop downstairs had like the straw hat logo you know on it i actually had to draw that and cut that out so you got to do like a thing for the lower jaw and then this i think and it goes like that okay okay well i already i already jacked that up beyond repair all right there you go there's there's my straw hat jolly roger minus the uh minus the the bones here. I'll draw on the bones. Yo! Yeah, hold on a second here. Is eh, eh. okay. Okay, maybe maybe this is harder than um maybe Tamalo Black. Hey, maybe they don't have any artists on the crew. They don't have any. They don't have any art skills to work with. Okay, there there you go. That's all they got, right? Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, let, let's do a roll call of the fake Straw Hat Pirates, and also let's do a comparison to the real Straw Hats and see how they uh, how they match up. Like if this was like a look of like contest. Like I think it's most famously known that Charlie Chaplin, you know, famous comedian from the silent era of films, Charlie Chaplin once entered himself in a Charlie Chaplin look-alike contest, and I think he only placed third. So let's put them side by side and see where they rank up on a score of 0 to 10, how they would rank. Okay, so here's Damaro Black uh, up against Luffy. Of course, Damaro Black, he's uh, much larger. His uh, belly, he definitely eats. I mean, you know, honestly, Luffy probably eats more meat than Damaro Black. It's just the number Damaro Black, maybe his uh, metabolism isn't that great or anything like that. He's a lot older. Uh, he's 36 years old and Luffy is 19. Uh, so yeah, but he does, he does have the outfit, right? I mean, he's got the vest thing he's got Luffy's straw hat although his is really kind of ruffled and really beat up so that's not proper grooming right there I'm assuming the scar on his face is just drawn on but I'm assuming the scar on his belly and his arm is real uh because Luffy doesn't have those scars um you know unless he was trying to mimic the scar that Aki Inu gave him at uh Marine Ford and he just like made it like way lower but he wouldn't know about that you know yeah because that's before Luffy returned um so I I I'll, I'll give uh, I'll give Damaro Black like a three out of ten. Like he got the outfit right, other than the straw hat kind of being a little bit ruffled. I mean, yeah, I'll give him a three out of ten. His hair color is right. I'll, I'll go with that. Um, then we have, uh, fake Zoro, who is Manjuro, Manjuro, and then the real Zoro. Um, I mean, like, he has the swords, right? They're obviously not Meito, or right? I'm sure each one of those swords on his hip is Saijo Owazamono grade, right? Absolutely. Uh, but no, he knows Zoro uses three swords. He's got three swords. He's got the outfit. Honestly, Manjuro, other than the face being a little bit, you know, different, you know, and obviously he doesn't have the scar because this was before they knew Zoro had a scar. Um, you know, I, I, I'll, you know, honestly, I'll give Monjuro a good solid 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Like, I think it, I think it works. It's cool. We'll roll with that. Uh, then we have fake Nami. Chocolate, or maybe Chocolat is her name. Chocolat. Uh, she is 26 years old. Uh, fake Zoro, by the way, was 25. So Chocolat is 26 years old. Um, I'm a little bit more disturbed by the fact that she doesn't have a belly button, it seems. So that's that's a little strange. Uh, but the hairstyle is just um, all wrong. Like, even if we're going with, you know... Be, you know, before the time skip, Nami's hairstyle. She doesn't really uh, work with that too well. Although, bonus points, Chocolat did get the tattoo. That might just be drawn on with like a Sharpie or something. But the tattoo looks pretty damn accurate to me. So, 
Yeah, I'll I'll give uh, Chocolate a good solid. Let, let's go. Let's go five out of ten. Five, it was gonna be four, but just five out of ten because of the tattoo. All right. And then we have a uh, fake Usopp who is Moun Moun Blutain. Moun Blutain. I might just call him Blutain from now on. Um, he's thirty years old. And, uh, of course, this isn't fake Usopp, of course, this, I'm sorry, this is fake Soge King, right? I mean, yeah, obviously, I'm sorry I made that mistake there. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, this is a dead ringer. Like, really, like, if you were gonna tell me that, you know, Soge King just trained a lot in two years and got super, super buff and grew about, like, you know, two feet, then yeah, yeah, I, I think this works perfectly. So, I think, uh, this is a 10 out of 10 right here. This is, this is prime, this is prime, uh, contest winner material right here. Um, then we go on to, uh, Fake Sanji. Fake Sanji is named Drip, and he is 24 years old. Uh, this is honestly not that bad. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that, the hair is just a wig. Like, like, just went to a party store, like Saitama that one time, and just got a party wig. Maybe drew on the fake eyebrow, you know, and like, there you go. Um, the suit just looks like, honestly, they just went to, like, a Goodwill or something, like a Salvation Army, and they just got, like, a, like, an old ruffled suit and just gave it to him, you know, um, but, you know, in all honesty, he looks, his features look a little bit more sunken in, he smokes the cigarette, I mean, that's, that's Sanji right there, I'd honestly give him an 8 out of 10, Drip and Sanji, 8 out of 10, um, and by the way, oh, actually, you know what, 9 out of 10, 9 out of 10, because all that, keep in mind, all the fake straw hats have to work with, are the wanted posters from the actual Straw Hats. Remember that, okay? They don't have, like, Facebook in the One Piece world. You can't just go on and click and be like, get a bunch of different, like, pictures of, like, Luffy or Nami and what they're, like, like what they're looking like and stuff. Okay, all you have to work with is this, or if maybe you know somebody that met the Straw Hats and they can tell you what they dressed like, or if they had other pictures of the Straw Hats, okay? But other than that, they all have to work with is this. So all Drip had to work with with making his Sanji cosplay is is this I, honestly 9 out of 10 is fair 9 out of 10 is fair okay with that um okay and then we had fake chopper now fake chopper is just a stray fox that is affectionately named nora gitsune or gitsune kitsune it just literally means stray fox in japanese uh he's 13 years old and uh yeah yeah they literally just captured a stray fox in the woods and then just chained it up it's very violent uh but you know what overall i mean aside from the mustache I mean, they put the hat on him. I mean, we have Chopper and Walk Point. It's essentially a dead ringer other than just the mustache. 9 out of 10. <laughs> 9 out of 10 for the fake Chopper. Okay, there we go. Um, then we have fake Robin. Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit, yeah. So, um, fake Robin's name is Coco. Uh, and she is actually 27 years old. Yes, that that is canonical. 27 years old. She is the same age as me. So, yeah, I mean, hey, whatever. Uh, and then we have the real Robin here, of course, next to her. And, uh, yeah, Robin, uh, you know, she, she lacks, uh, she's a little bit more vertically, you know, challenged than real Robin. Robin has the slender legs, you know, she, she got legs, uh, and Coco doesn't. Uh, she's trying to encapsulate her hairstyle from before the time skip, so she kind of gets that right. Yeah, I'll, uh... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go 3 out of 10 on this. Uh, but ironically enough... Coco was stated by Damalo Black to be the one of the straw, the fake straw hats that resembled her real counterpart the most. And the Revolutionary Army, when they were on Sabaody, actually were trying to like, you know, grab Robin and bring her back. They ended up grabbing Coco instead and, and escaping with her. So the Revolutionary Army, and these aren't just like bumbling, I maybe like Bulk and Skull join the freaking Revolutionary Army, like do 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 do. Hey Skull, is that Nico Robin? I do believe it is, Bulk, let's go! Do 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 and they just grabbed her and brought her back to the Revolutionary Army base. Um, but yeah, according to Damalo Black though, she is the one that looks the most like Robin, so I guess I gotta go I gotta go with the fake captain, 10 out of 10. And um fake Frankie's name is Turco. Uh, and Turco, of course, uh, keep in mind, once again, they only have the, the wanted poster to go with. So they don't know that Frankie runs around in Speedos very much unless they actually met somebody that had a run-in with Frankie or they went to Water 7 and they, you know, got the report down. Like, oh yeah, Frankie, he's from Water 7. He usually runs around wearing a Speedo. So Turco doesn't know that, so Turco just wears pants. Um, and, and like, you see a part of the Hawaiian shirt in the wanted poster. So he, he approximates the wanted poster, um, uh, pretty well. I mean, other than the last 
lack of, uh, he doesn't have a chin. Frankie has a triple chin, but, you know, Turco doesn't have a chin at all. And also, he seems to smoke. He gets the hair right, though. He's rocking the hair and the sunglasses, the shades, and the Hawaiian shirt. Although, Turco buttons up his Hawaiian shirt, because once again, he doesn't know. I mean, and he's got the neck. I mean, he's got, I mean, can we put Turco in the running with the greatest neck in One Piece next to freaking uh, Denjiro, right? He might win. So, yeah, Turco is definitely a contender. I'm gonna say based on the material Turco had to work with, once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. I mean he's not as buff as Frankie, but yeah, that's that's what we got. Now that's all of the members of the fake straw hats, because remember, even though Brooke was a member of the crew at this point, Brooke was a member of the straw hats for like two weeks before they got separated at Sabaody, right? So uh that wasn't well known to the world that Brooke was a member. That wasn't found out until two years later at the Sabadome when the Marines finally found out, uh, when the managers of Brooke's, you know, tour sold them out and everything. So yeah, there's no Brooke, and there's obviously no Gene Bay because he just recently joined. He didn't even get the offer to join, of course, until after the time skip, right? So, so they're they're the fake straw hats, right? Yeah. Um. And uh, oh yeah, Turco's age was uh, 45 years old, so he he's actually the oldest of the crew. Um. You know, Frankie also being a little bit older than the rest, so that makes sense. And Damaro Black is 36. Um. You know, there is uh, there's just a lot of like hilarious moments that I'm picturing in my head in the forming of the fake straw hat pirates and i'm gonna lead us off with this okay so this is the thing and then this also leads into what their master plan was which i still don't get but all right so here's the situation right the real straw hats um they don't become well known to the world until luffy gets his first bounty right so remember all the stuff that happened in the east blue prior to the arlong park arc you know luffy and zoro defeating morgan uh luffy defeating alvita buggy Don Krieg, Captain Kuro, all that stuff is not well known until after Luffy defeats Arlong, that's when he gets his first bounty of 30 million. And then immediately after that, in the span of only a few months, the Straw Hats take the world by storm. They barge into the Grand Line, they defeat one of the warlords, I mean, yeah, that is covered up by the government, but the government still knows about it. But then they go to Eni's lobby and they declare war on the entire world, Eni's lobby is bombed into oblivion by the Buster Call. And then after that, they go to Freak, well, they go to Florian Triangle, but not a lot of people know about what happened to Florian Triangle. Then they go to the Sabaody Archipelago, and Luffy punches out a world noble. And then they, you know, Luffy shows up at Marineford with all these crazy powerful inmates from Impel Down that he helped break out, that he was like the mastermind next to Buggy for breaking everybody out of Impel Down. And then it's found out during Marineford, like, oh, Luffy is the son of the revolutionary dragon. He's the sworn blood brother of Ace, and he's working alongside Whitebeard to free Ace and everything like that. And then he leaves Marineford, and then he comes back later. He the ox bell and he's like oh luffy and then after that nothing nothing that was like keep in mind everything from the arlong park arc all the way to marine ford that was like oh man i don't know like six seven months at minimum uh maybe maybe at most 10 months it was definitely less than a year i would say at most 10 months that all that happened so the straw hats took the world by storm and then just disappeared off the radar okay so and of course, the other members of the worst generation, like Kid and Apu and Drake and Hawkins and Law, they're all making big waves in the new world, so Morgans is writing all about them. Like, big news! The Rocky Port incident! Big news! Eustace Kid sinks Big Mom ships, you know? So, the news definitely, you know, it's not like people forget about the Straw Hats, but there's no new news coming out of the Straw Hats. They seem to have disappeared from the world, and all these other members of the worst generation are really causing havoc, so the public just focuses more on them, right? Okay, so... I like to imagine, all the members of the fake Straw Hats are from the East Blue. I like to imagine one night, let's say about a year, a year after the Straw Hats start their training. So we're a year into the time skip. This is right around the time the Payback War actually probably happens. Um, Damaro Black is just hanging out in a bar. Maybe with one of the other fake straw hats. I would imagine some of them were friends. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Blue Tain, Mound Blue Tain, the fake Sage King. Maybe him and and freaking Damaro Black were like drinking buddies. I could see that because I think Damaro Blacks, when it was listed in the Viva cards, like what their favorite foods were. Damaro's Blacks was just like I just like getting smashed at a bar, you know. And Mound Blue Tains were like I just like a good drought beer. So I could see, and they're also closer in age because uh, Damaro Black is 36 and Mound Blue Tain is 30. It's just 30. So I can imagine they're hanging out in some random nowhere town in the middle of the east blue and they're just getting drunk at a bar one night right and they're just like glug, glug, glug. He's like, yeah, well, what's up with you mountain blue Ten? oh not much you know just crap you know yeah it's just crap you know, those two guys that are hanging out those two big sweaty guys hanging out in a bar right and then in the background though 
they hear some people talking about the straw hats. They hear somebody being like, it's like, wow, I heard uh, I heard Eustace Kid sank a bunch of uh, Yonko Big Mom's ship in the New World. Oh, man, that's crazy. Hey, remember those uh, those straw hats? Like, oh, yeah, the straw hats. I remember those guys. Man, they, they did all those crazy things at the war. Luffy was the son of Dragon. It's crazy. What happened to them? Yeah, I haven't read anything in the newspaper last year. They just seem to have disappeared off the earth. It's like, well, maybe they died, or maybe the maybe the government took care of them, you know, in, in like a secretive way. And he's like, yeah, well, I guess that does make sense. Or maybe they just ran in hiding, you know, after after all that stuff that happened in Marineford. I can't blame them. Maybe they just ran in hiding, and they just gave up the pirate life. And it was right there at that moment, Damaro Black, being an expert con artist and really good at, he's like a silver, he's three-tongued, but he's silver-tongued. He's really good at lying. At that point, he's kind of kind of halfway toasted, you know, drinking, and he's just like, straw hats, huh? And so him and Mount Blutain, they're stumbling home that night, and they're just like, hey, Mount Blutain, I have an idea. How about we become the straw hat pirates? Like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah, think about it, man, think about it. They're probably all dead or they're in hiding. They're probably, it's been a whole year. They're not coming back. So what if we pretend to be the Straw Hats, right? It, it can't be that hard. And they're all, they're already so famous. All that fame is just for us for the taking. All that notoriety. And then, and then what we can do is that we could get a bunch of really strong pirates together and then they could work for us. Yeah. He's like, that sounds like a really good idea. Like, yeah. All right, all right. Get the crew together tomorrow at the hideout. We're gonna, we're gonna do this shit, right? You're gonna, we're gonna do this. All right. And then they stumble home. They puke a little bit or whatever. And then the next day, they're still, they're hungover, but they're like, you know what? Yeah, we're, we're doing this, right? So they get their crew together. Their East Blue crew. All right. Maybe, maybe some of them were originally there. Like maybe Turco. Maybe, maybe Chocolate was like Mount Blutain's wife or girlfriend or something. Uh, who knows? So maybe they, they're missing a few. Maybe they get like maybe five people together and they're like, all right, we need, we need two more people. We need a Sanji. We need a Robin and we need a, we need a pet fox, Tanuki dog thing. And we can, we can make this work. And they're like, yeah, Captain, Captain Luffy. We got this, right? You freaking tomorrow black, he fishes out like a fake old, like, like a straw hat out of like an old, like, uh, uh, like his grandma's freaking chest in the attic and puts it on. He's like, yeah, we're good. And so they start their, their adventure. They start go, going to various taverns all over the East Blue. And I, I just, that's one of the things that makes this so damn funny to me. Like, what was the recruiting process like? What lie could Tomorrow Black possibly have told these people in order to recruit people to join? Like, even if, like, the, the all the members of the fake Straw Hats were all, like, friends, like, they already knew each other, still, how could he have spun this to his friends, like, this is what we're doing now? Like, this, this is really dangerous, what they're doing, when you really think about it, right? You know, because it's like, we're gonna pretend to be the Straw Hats, like, alright, if, if people believe that, doesn't that mean, like, the Marines are just gonna be coming after our asses then? It's like, no, 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 no. No, no, you're, 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 you're thinking this too complicated here. You know, we're the straw hats. We're so badass. They don't even mess with us. I'm like, all right, sure. That makes sense. Maybe like going D and D, uh, you know, terminology, just going back to that. Cause I mentioned, you know, my character, William, maybe tomorrow black, you know, he just had a really good, he, he just had a really good deception and persuasion skill. So imagine this. Okay. They're at a bar, some other random bar in the East. And, um, the, the fake straw hats are there. They're trying to build up their crew and they're like looking over at a guy over by the bar and they're like, Hey, you know what? That guy over there. He's like, yeah, that guy over there. Yeah. He's a dead ringer for our cook. He's going to be our Sanji. And they're like, all right. I mean, I guess so. And so Jamaro Black goes over to this random dude at a bar. He's drinking. He's in like a ruffled old suit or whatever from his job or whatever. He's a, he's a banker in the One Piece world or something. And Jamaro Black's like, hey, buddy, how you doing? I'm like, what? He's like, hey, come outside with me. I want to want to talk to something. I want to talk something about you, but like a private. And he's like, okay. So they go outside. He's like, all right. Have you heard of the Straw Hat Pirates? And he's like, uh, yeah, of course. Everybody knows about the Straw Hat Pirates. I mean, I haven't heard anything about them recently. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. We're forming the fake Straw Hat Pirates. So we're going to get my crews together in there. We're going to get a whole crew together. I have a, a trap set out in the woods. We're going to catch ourselves a fox, and then we're, we're waiting on that. But you, right here, I'm telling, I'm seeing you across the bar. You are a dead ringer for Black Leg Sanji. So we want you, we're going to go and get you maybe a fake wig or some fake wig. We're going to get you a wig, put it on, draw an eyebrow on your face. You have the suit, it's all good, you know, whatever. And you could be the fake Sanji. 
and we will create a fake Straw Hat crew, and then we'll be uh, rich or something. I don't know. I haven't really figured that out that far ahead. <laughs> and then what? Did Drip just like, uh, I'm not really sure about that. That that seems like a really, that, that plan seems to have just like Swiss cheese levels of holes in it, you know? And But maybe tomorrow Black was just like, oh, well, rule for persuasion. Natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right fine okay oh uh, yeah you know what you know what that idea that plan makes no sense but i am just drunk enough to try it let's go <laughs> that's so funny i can't believe that all right so that that's maybe how they gathered their crew together right okay but here's the problem here's the problem all right what was their end game like seriously provided that luffy and the Marines did not show, like, Sentomaru did not show up at Marine Ford, and uh, not Marine Ford, at Sabote at that point to, uh, you know, screw over the fake Straw Hats and, like, you know, expose them and, like, ruin their plans. Like, provided, let's say, those strong pirates they got together, like Caribou, actually did listen. Well, actually, I think it was stated that Caribou kind of knew, or he had, like, a suspicion, and Caribou was going to take over anyway. So I guess even if the Marines or Luffy didn't show up, Caribou would just, you know, guomp them all with his mud powers and just take over the crew anyway. In fact, Caribou... Caribou might have actually killed a good member of the crew. I think Tomorrow Black was captured by Sentomaru and taken and impaled down. But the other members of the crew, like Drip and Chocolat and Mount Blutain and Turco and everybody, they might have been killed by Caribou. Because Caribou doesn't care. Caribou, there was that one Marine that was kind of like spying on them, and their crew just straight up just... Ugh! And just threw him in a ditch. And he, he dead. He's dead. All right. So they might have, I think he even tried to like suffocate Drip. So there might have been a serious, like they might have, they might all be dead right now. Okay. But provided, let's say Caribou doesn't get involved. What was their overall plan? Like how did tomorrow Black really like spin this to the crew? Like, all right, here's the, here's the plan guys. Step one, we form the fake straw hat crew. We get the costumes, we get the Fox, whatever. Step two we gather a bunch of actually strong pirates, convince them we're the real straw hats, that I have a bounty of 400 million on my head, and uh, we get them to work for us. And then step three, uh, well, we uh, uh, conquer the new world, uh, become Yonko, find the One Piece, uh, I become Pirate King. Like, we'll figure out part three when we get there, because you'd figure, like, you know, if you're gonna create a pirate crew, like, even if you have a bunch of really strong pirates working underneath you, going into the new world, like, they have to know the new world is dangerous, even if, like, Tomorrow Black is an outlaw, he's a pirate, maybe not even a real pirate, he might have just been an outlaw by the government, right? Um, you know, he's a nuisance more than anything, but everyone should know how dangerous the new world is, if you're a citizen in One Piece, right? So everyone should know that, so be like, dude, you know, we can't just barge into the new world, like, the marines are gonna be everywhere, they're gonna be hunting for us, if they actually believe we're the real straw hats, then they're gonna be coming after us full force, we're gonna have freaking vice admirals, maybe even admirals chasing after us, like, did not one person in the fake straw hats mention this? <laughs> did not one person was just like, did freaking Turco raise his hand? He's like, well, Captain, there seems to be a bit of a problem with your plan. Ah, oh, shut up, we'll figure it out as we go. So that's so damn funny to me, like, like if they were never encumbered by the Marines or Caribou or, or Luffy and the real straw hats, what would their have final endgame have been? You know, like, because honestly, I could see them just gathering up a strong crew together, going into the new world, and immediately being screwed over by either the weather or by, like, Smoker just capturing them and throwing them into G5. Honestly, that's probably what would have happened. Because G5 is stationed really close to the New World, at uh, the beginning of the New World, um, and Smoker was, like, on a lookout for the Straw Hats. Anyway, Smoker actually would have been pissed. That, that would have actually been perfect. Let's say by some miracle, they actually make their way through the undersea currents, they make it through Fishman Island, and the fake Straw Hats and their strong crew make it to the New World. All right? First thing that would have happened is, um, you know, Smoker would have captured them and been like, you know, it's like, I'm Straw Hat Luffy, do you know who I am? And Smoker's like, you're dumbass, you're not Straw Hat Luffy. And they're just, BAM! Smoker would have just knocked him out in a single hit, and they probably would have gotten uh, turned over to those, um, the, the, the freaking Marines in G5 that are like, you know, burning pirates alive and shit, you know? So that's probably what would have happened. And Smoker probably wouldn't have stopped them, because Smoker's like, it's an insult. It's an insult 
that you would dare even claim to be the straw. It's like Sentomaru was pissed enough at them. Smoker wouldn't be having that, though. Smoker understands what the real straw hats are about, and Smoker and Luffy are kind of rivals, and it's like, okay, I'm a Marine, you're a pirate. But, you know, Smoker kind of understands that Luffy's not, like, a bad person. Like, he wants to ruin, like, destroy the world or anything. He understands that. Like, Luffy doesn't murder. He doesn't do that kind of stuff. Smoker understands that. So, if he sees these freaking fake straw hats going around tarnishing the name of the straw hats, you know, Smoker would definitely take umbrage with that big time. Tashiki would as well. So yeah, that's probably what would have happened. But I think in all honesty, they probably would just, like, all right, man, we're going to n the new world. And they dive down into the freaking uh, currents and they would immediately get wrecked by a sea king or something. It's probably more likely. Or the, or the Kraken would have probably just, yeah, because the Kraken would have still been there. Kraken would have just grabbed them and just crushed their ship. <laughs> Game over. You know, like, well, that, that plan was really good, right? Honestly, what they should have done... Um, I guess they should have honestly just stayed. I, they, they made it all the way to Sabote Archipelago. If they're all from the east and they made it to Sabote, that implies they had at least some skill. I mean, you don't just make it from the east all the way to Sabote. You gotta have some talent there. Maybe they were just, like, you know, lying to people and, like, getting them to do all the hard work. Uh, but I think they should have stopped at Sabote rather than continue on, like, trying to gather up stronger pirates, maybe. Um, you know, maybe, maybe honestly, like, if I was in that situation... They should have just tried to get as much money as they could have. Like, he's like, I'm straw at Luffy. Give me all your money. Be like, oh, okay, here. And then, like, take all their money and then just run. Just run and then go under the radar. Like, we made out with a cool, like, you know, all the money we, we intimidated out of the townsfolk. All the, you know, pr pr pretending to be the straw hats for, like, over a year. We managed to accrue, like, a hundred million berries or something like that. Or maybe even more than that. Like, you know what? You know what? We'll take this. Split it up amongst ourselves. The fox doesn't get a share. It's like, okay, fine. The fox gets a share. And, uh... Uh, then then we just, you know, live our lives in, you know, decent luxury. Like, you know, we do okay for ourselves. Like, that would have been the plan. Uh, maybe that maybe that was the plan, but I guess it wasn't because they were gathering straw crew, strong crews together. So, yeah, that that's the situation there. But anyway, yeah, that's the fake Straw Hat Pirates. I just wanted to bring it up for you guys because... Um, it's just, it's just fascinating what their overall plans were. It's just, it's just very interesting how this actually worked to get where they were. But yeah, uh, they're gone now. They're, they're gone now. Possibly dead. Tomorrow's probably in level two impel down. And uh, we don't know what happened with the fox. I hope the fox got, I hope the fox freed itself. Uh, you know, Nora Gitsune, he's like, screw that. I'm finally free. I'm out of here. And he just, he hightailed it out of there and he's living peacefully in the Sabote Archipelago somewhere in the forest. You know, and he's having a good life. I hope the fox made it out okay. Cause the fox is really a, he's He's, he's a victim here, if anything, right? Okay. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching 101 signing out. Later.